Yes. What um, type of technology do you use to provide these services? Is you know internet, broadband, wireless? Um, Please. Okay, it's all of the kind of all of the above. The problem is in rural Georgia we don't have good uh, broadband. A lot of the hospitals, clinics, schools, jails, nursing homes, they don't have sufficient broadband to do telemedicine. Um, because if, if it's not clear and if it's not good, the docs are not going to use it. And so we've been able to, some sites have T, we dedicated T1 lines, which really works unbelievably well, flawlessly. Um, we have about 500 endpoints right now, and about 150 of them have dedicated T1 lines. The rest have carved out enough broadband that they have from their own agencies. 4G wireless now. Really, there's some of everything that can be used. I see it moving towards 4G, LTE, these kinds of things as we move forward, as that becomes better and better. The connection we had today was over a 4G card. Uh, so anyway, any, any, just about anything, as we move forward, it's going to get better and better. And uh, I don't think that's going to issue. Somebody said this morning, uh, I think it was Kelly, we were talking, Georgia's the most wired state in the nation. You can get broadband anywhere. In the most remote places, you'd be surprised. So. And until we get wireless everywhere, that's where the public health part comes in because we've just no, we have installed no, those no. dedicated lines. Yeah, well, one thing uh, I just wanted to point out is that healthcare and telemedicine it's an implementation. So you know we're using FaceTime, and I just think it's important to remember it's not all about the technology; it's about making it happen. And once you implement telemedicine, then you're going to see the technology follow. So I think that's a very important point, is to first focus on the implementation and getting doctors to use it. Everyone has an iPhone or an iPad. Let's first get comfortable with that, and then we'll develop the greatest technology uh, once we leverage that, that implementation platform. Can I make a comment there? Um, you have to remember, almost every state has some sort of medical composite board rules um, that you have to abide by. And that's what we have done in the states. Um, you can get a copy of those rules. Um, but things like, for us, Dr. Grossman, FaceTime is not something that we consider um, secure. Uh, so we don't use any FaceTime. Our physicians, it's all encrypted and a secure um, dedicated network, dedicated environment. Uh, so those are issues that you have to consider. You also have to consider, in the state of Georgia, you have to be able to have access to a history and physical, be able to do a history and physical using peripherals like you saw today, um, or you're not in compliance. And if you have any questions about that, you can ask Dr. Thummer. But there are things legally that we have to abide by or, or we get in trouble. Kelly. I, I heard, talking about the rules, I heard both doctors talk about some challenges we have in Georgia, so maybe some barriers we need to knock down. Well, what specifically is our challenge? Uh, one of our challenges is establishing a new patient-doctor relationship. Like anything, there are concerns. There's HIPAA issues. FaceTime is encrypted, so it is, it is an option. It's not incredibly um, sophisticated, or it's not incredibly good. Well, the bottom line is we have new patient doctor issues and other states are taking the lead and allowing you to establish new patient doctor visits. All of those companies that I referenced, none of them are here in Georgia. And I don't know how you're gonna regulate these companies and these patients in these counties that have no physicians from consuming health care from these other companies. So as Paula pointed out, we have incredible regulatory challenges, we have legal challenges, but that's a big difference. This is about the free market. This is the Georgia Public Policy Foundation. And we're here to allow people to have choice. And if patients are choosing concierge medicine, we have to consider the regulations. And we have to ask ourselves, whether well, the regulations worth it? Because these companies will stay out of Georgia. And, and Paul is exactly right. We do have a lot of regulatory challenges. But we don't have technology challenges. And as Dr. English pointed out, medicine's pretty simple. It's about a patient talking to a doctor. And that's really what we're trying to accomplish here. Fitzgerald, let me commend you and the Department of Public Health as you have advanced into predictive medicine with your CDC breast cancer genetics program. And I'm so excited to hear that you're going to be in all the different uh, local county health departments. Are you planning on extending your current reach for your genetic breast cancer screening program through your telemedicine in connection with genetic counseling in the university program? Absolutely. 
uh, and we have the genetic counseling from the adult point of view, and we also have genetic counseling. Uh, public health does the um, is responsible for identifying children at risk. Um, we have um, we have the birth certificate data, uh, and with the birth certificate data, we. Uh, mine that data and identify children who may be at certain risk and then we get we we notify the parents through the local health department so we can say this child may need particular screening so we intend to do it from both ends of the spectrum yes the last one dr chair thank you very much for this presentation I, i'm from one of those areas that doesn't have access but i think in addition to access we have, as was first mentioned, an education problem, and patient education has got to be a very big part of any telemedicine or, or, or practice of medicine anywhere. Without that, without the ability to communicate with the people in these uh, less accessible areas, then we're not going to accomplish anything by diagnosing and knowing what's wrong. We've got to have patient education, and we've got to have personal responsibility. So we need to integrate telemedicine with some professionals who are able to help people in those areas. Without that, I don't think we're going to have the success we would like to have. I think you're absolutely right. And the example I gave about Albany, really and truly, the decrease in prematurity came from the education of the patients. Because I, I'm an OBGYN, it came from private practice. Each of those obstetric visits is an hour and an hour and a half long. There's no private doc that can afford to give that kind of information amount of time. But if you connect it like with the health department, so you have a public-private relationship, then you can get some impacts uh, throughout, throughout um, some impacts because of information. Uh, because public health is a state's asset. And our job, we're paid by the state to provide that kind of information and to bring about those public-private relationships that do that education part. That's that's our sweet spot. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the, the other passions I have is more the educational component. I, I, I realized this a long time ago. People are driving four or five hours to see me, and I, I would be retired now if I had a nickel for every time they said to me, Dr. English, in five minutes you just explained to me what doc, 20 doctors in the last 10 years couldn't explain to me. So that's a huge part, and that's why people come to me. Well, now, number one, they can come via telemedicine, and I can actually discuss these things that are foreign to them and easy for me. But so on our particular websites, the Concussion Institute, the MS Center, we have to develop um, access, small videos, vignettes, educational materials. So I think there's a twofold thing that technology is going to bring them. Because again, what's scary to you, just like when I deal with my taxes or uh, things like that, scares the heck out of me when it comes to the accountant doesn't have a problem with it. It's very simple for them. And we need to turn technology and education into making these complex things simple to patients too.